Don't we have extra tape? So. <laughs> All right. Nine one B. We're talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing roots and some miscellaneous topics today. The primary focus today is indeed adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing the roots. But we do have a couple other things I do want to mention here for you. Uh, things that might help you when you're using whatever help you answer these. Now I got to mention we're not looking for decimal answers today. That's not the point. Anybody can go on a calculator and type in root 3 plus root 2 and come up with the decimal answer. That's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about answers that involve roots. That's our main concern. All right, so first thing I remind you is about canceling out or inverse operations. You have to remember that squares and square roots cancel each other out. They're opposite, just like addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. So as you can see here, I'm taking the square root of 9 and then I square it. I come back to 9. If I square 4 and then take the square root, I come back to 4. Those two operations cancel each other out. So when you see that in a problem, know that you don't actually have to do anything. Just cancel them out. Now, you also have to know that there is another way to write a root. And that may be helpful too. I think on the calculators on the computers, they do not have a square root key. So you're going, oh, how do I take the square root? There is actually a way to take a square root on a computer. If you want to find, let's say, the square root of 7, what you have to do is 7 and then your power and where you would put in like, you know, 2 if you want to do 7 squared or 7 fourth, right? You actually put in 0.5 or 1 half. And that will take a square root for you. All right, the top number indicates the power, the bottom number indicates the root. So you can change that to whatever you want to. You can be two-thirds, take it to the second power, and then cube root. You can do all sorts of things with that. But I want to make you aware of that because I know some of you will probably rely on a calculator on your computer at one point or another. So that might be useful for you. Okay. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. All right. What I go through here are the basic properties for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and how to work with the roots when you deal with them. Right. Start with adding. First thing here I'm talking about is the square root of 16 plus the square root of 25. Now, you can't just come up to this problem and say, oh, 16 to 25. Well, I'm going to add those up and they get 41 and then take the square root of 41. That's an incorrect answer. You can't add these up to 41 and take the square root. What you have to do is work in parts here. You've got to say, okay, Square root of 16, I can do that. The square root of 16 makes 4. Then you've got to come back and take the square root of 25. So the square root of 25 makes 5. And then you add those two together and come up with 9. That's the correct answer. Same thing will be true for subtraction. I can't say, oh, square root of 25 minus square root of 16. Well, I'm going to do 25 minus 16 is 9. And then take the square root of 9 and get 3. Wrong answer again. You've got to go through these in parts. The square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 16 is 4, and 5 minus 4 makes 1. That's the way you got to do it. Now, multiplication and division changes. Multiplication, you've got the skin, and you can say I'm using 16 and 25 a lot because those are things that are perfect for us. Square root of 16 times the square root of 25. If I multiply those together, I get 400, and I take the square root of 400, and I get 20. Well, if you do it in parts, the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 25 is 5, 4 times 5 is 20. Aha! So multiplication we like. We can just run the whole thing together and then take the square root. That sh could save us some time. Same is true for division. Now, I only put division here because I want you to know the rules. But as you can see from the problems over here, Right? Division's not over here. You won't have any homework problems tonight that involve division. And the reason why is it's just much too complicated at this level. All right, when you get to algebra, you'll work with dividing square roots, but as far as this class, no, it's not a priority. We just work with adding, subtracting, and multiplying. But anyway, we're dividing the square root of 36 divided by the square root of 4. Well, I divide those two out and I get 9. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Square root of 9 makes 3. If I go in parts, square root of 36 is 6, square root of 4 is 2, 6 divided by 2 makes 3. So either way you get 3. So those are the properties. If you use these 
multiplication one, you'll probably save some time at some point. You've got to remember to add and subtract them, though. They've got to be kept separate. Now, as you can see, in the things I've marked examples over here, the ones I have with letters, I've already done for you. So there's nothing to do with the ones with letters that I haven't already done. It's just the numbered problems that we're going to have to work through. Up here are a couple last rules. Adding and subtracting. If I've got an adding and subtracting problem, I can only add and subtract problems with like roots or radicands. Right? Meaning the thing underneath the square roots have to be the same in order for me to add or subtract. It's kind of like common denominators and fractions. Right? Where a fraction, if I want to add them, the bottom numbers have to be the same. It's kind of the same thing with roots. The root part has to be the same or I can't do it. Multiplying, multiplying is actually easier even though the description is longer. We multiply the whole numbers together and then the radicands. Again, radicand is the word for root, the correct word. And then simplify slash combine. So as you can see, the first thing I work through here for you is some multiplication problems. All right, the multiplication problems are not particularly difficult, but I work them through for you anyway. Start off with this one. Right, 7 root 2 times 4 root 5. Again, the directions say to put the whole numbers together, to put the roots together, and then just jam the whole thing together. So the first thing I do is I look at this problem and say, okay, 7 and 4, the whole number parts. I'm going to multiply 7 and 4 together, and I come up with 28. Fine. You're going to do the same thing now with the root parts. So I'm going to multiply the square root of 2 and the square root of 5 together. This is what you can see here. Square root of 2 and square root of 5 multiplied together make square root of 10. Then you just put your two answers together. I put the 28 and the root 10 together, and I come up with 28 root 10. No big deal. B looks a little bit longer, but it's the same basic approach. I've got 6 root 3 times 2 root 12. 6 root 3 times 2 root 12. So you want to start by putting the whole numbers together. So I start off by putting the 6 and the 2 together. 6 times 2 makes 12. By the way, somebody asked me last time, how do you know what operation you're using? So much for obvious. Okay. Then you put the roots together. So I'm going to do root 3 times root 12. Root 3 times root 12 makes root 36. Put your two answers together and you come up with 12 root 36. Now, if you stop at that point, that's fine. If you've gotten that far, you're doing quite fine this year. However, I do want to point out, which is why this goes on, that this problem can actually be simplified further because the square root of 36 is equal to 6. 6 times 6 makes 36. So this is really the same as 12 times 6 or 72 is a final answer. Again, if you stop here, I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem with that. If you get to here and come up with the right answer, that's better. But this is not an incorrect answer. It's just not fully simplified. So if you stop here, that's okay. I'll give you points for that. No big deal. All right, so let's go to this column here. That, this next column here has just got basic problems, perfect roots, things like that that shouldn't be too tricky for us. All right, let's go to example one. The square root of 81 minus the square root of 25. Remember, when we're subtracting, we can't jam things together. They have to be taken in parts. So square root of 81, square root of 81 is equal to 9. Because 9 times 9 is 81. Square root of 25, square root of 25 is equal to 5. 